Absolutely. Welcome back to the show. This is your host, David Yanis, and you're listening to Midwatch with the Rev. We have a very special guest who I've been really just speaking to just a few minutes right now, but really talking about him the whole half hour. <laughs> um, Mr. Ryan Hard Bunky, how are you doing, sir? Very, very well. Thank you so much. I'm uh, happy to be with have this opportunity. Hey Amen. Well, we're we're excited to have you. We have a lot of listeners that are, that are, we're excited and we're tweeting and Facebooking to us, letting us know that they're going to be here in the show. And and uh, brother, just just tell us what's on your heart before we jump into the interview. Uh, what what are you doing right now in 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 the states? And then we'll jump into your book and stuff. Yes, um, you know, primarily we are having our gospel crusades in Africa. Uh, when I say we. I speak of uh, Christ for All Nations, the ministry, and uh, God has blessed them in, in, in a way that is, is beyond, beyond what shall I say, everything uh, um, uh, that has possibly ever happened before. Um, millions of people have received Jesus Christ as their Savior, and I'm very happy about that. Um, now, we I'm living in the, in, in the United States, and God spoke to me that uh, he had sent me to America, not just uh, for America to be the offering plate for Africa, but also for America's sake. This blew me out of the waters, and uh, I, I, I started with uh, a, a a, a crusade in a small town in Florida with 14,000 people and lo and behold I had in every service 5,000 people so um, and, 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 and that uh, really got me going for God. A few months later we had a, a gospel crusade in the Amway the center in Orlando and, uh, um, and that huge center was, uh, was filled with people, uh, people got saved, <laughs> it's unbelievable, and, uh, and we are now preparing for Miami in July, for Greensboro in North Carolina in September, and in uh, Long Island, New York, the, the Nassau Museum, in uh, November this year, and next year we will have six stadium crusades uh, across the U.S. Um, and I always say I I dug out the trumpets that brought down the walls of Jericho, <laughs> and I have cleaned them up. I have repaired them, and now with all my might. I'm going to blow faith across America and the news, the wonderful news that uh, 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 America will be saved. Mm, that, that is amazing. And, and I know that, that, I mean, you're a man of prayer. What do you see that is needed most in America? I know Jesus, <laughs> but I mean, what is the prayer life not there or is there something that, that, that cause I, I've been about several churches this year, and two-thirds of every church that I go to come up to their altars, and, and they just need a touch from God, like something amazing that they need. Um, and I'm sure you're seeing that pl plenty of places where you go. But uh, where do you where do you see the biggest need is? Well, the biggest need, um, you know, uh, I'm an evangelist, so I may be biased. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's all, all so important. It's all for the... It all interacts. It all interacts. Without prayer, nothing goes. But I see the need for clear, crystal clear gospel preaching. I call it the ABC of the gospel. There is so little of it. Uh, and no, uh, no fisherman will throw out the net without pulling it in, at least expecting one fish. And in many, many churches, they preach and throw out the net and never pull it in. There is no protocol. And we, I believe, 
America may respond to the preaching of the powerful gospel in Jesus Christ, which is accompanied, accompanied by, um, by signs and wonders. Mm, that's amazing. That, that's what I've been telling people as well, that we just got to preach Jesus and believe in the cookie-cutter faith that's out there. We need to just let God move in the service and change people's lives, that, that the sermons have to just reflect the Lord. Now, when you came to, to the United States, I know it was, it was a decision that you had, to, you had to ask God for a sign. Tell us about the God just stirring your heart and coming to the United States. Yes, uh, my ministry, I, 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 my background is German. Uh, I, I'm, an, I'm an American citizen in the meantime. I love America. Um, I lived in Frankfurt in Germany at that time. It's just uh, over 10 years ago. And um, and we had a, a big gospel crusade in Nigeria. And uh, somebody had asked me, read it with me, to uh, a pastor to to be present at the opening of his big church and then uh, cut the wording as it is as it is uh, customary there and then um, although i don't do these things and i don't have time for that but because he was such a dear friend i said i will do it so i went to nigeria i went uh, one day too early and i thought i had a full day just to pray and something was very much on my heart. My team asked me to move to America um, for the sake of our film series, uh, which we were doing at that time. Um, on, uh, on, 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 we call it Full Flame, but it, 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 it really is the heart of the message that burns in my spirit. Um, the service for God and and yield it to the Lord and step by step how one can come into this uh, a kind of uh, ministry and I said I, I'm not just moving I have never moved in my life just because I thought so I need to hear from God so I was in Lagos and I I uh, uh, was in the uh, Lagos Sheraton and I prayed the whole day. In the afternoon, I thought I had peace in my heart, but I still had no answer. And I said, Lord, I've never asked you for a sign for myself, but I'm asking you for a sign right now. Um, if you want me to move to America, then do something um, in my ministry that I have never seen before. The next day, early in the morning, I traveled to Unicha, to that church opening, and there were 12,000 people present. And while I was preaching there, they brought in a casket with a man who had been dead for three days. And the doctor had issued the death certificate. The mortician was there because he had uh, uh, embalmed him. The wife was there. Members of the family was, were, were there. And, and 12,000 witnesses were there. And while I preached and prayed, that man jumped out of the coffin. It took that place. It <laughs> took that tank. It, it, I have never seen anything like it because this miracle was so well documented. We have all the documents that, that there is afterwards, you know, uh, uh, the man who was raised from the dead went back to the doctor who issued his death, death certificate, who shook his head and said, well, I can't explain, I don't know. The mortician was a real heathen, you know, an animist. He, he became saved, gloriously saved. Today, him and his whole house saw the Lord, and I heard that he, he is an evangelist, by the way. So, um, uh, 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 thousands of people got saved because of this glorious testimony. The name of the man who was raised from the dead is Daniel 
Ekechuku. Well, to, to connect it now with America, when I saw that, when that man jumped out of the coffin, I jumped to the telephone and called my wife in Frankfurt. It was the 2nd of December. I said, honey, this year we will be in America. <laughs> and, and then, you know, that was in the year 2001. So there is already some time passed. But it is a real proven miracle, time proven miracle. And, and I can see now the connection. What God did in Africa um, in the last 10 years, we had 55 million people complete a decision card in our face-to-face -face meetings in Nigeria. And this miracle of Daniel jumping out of the, the coffin, uh, I feel is the miracle that brings promise to America that God is going to do something here. And no matter how people talk about negative things, I have seen him turn the tables. I have seen him shake whole nations that I thought had rejected the gospel and extracted people and saved them and put them into his arms. I really feel in my heart that the Lord will do the same with America. And uh, 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 I have, as I said to some other people, I, I have seen, I have seen uh, um, uh, 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 God do it once. God do it once. And that has given me incurable faith for America. And I don't want to be cured. Mm. That's that's amazing because the, the years that you've preached and you've been into several countries and, and where the where they didn't know the gospel and even some of them and the impact that you had, how much more impact can you have in a country who was birthed from the gospel and that that yeah. it's in their hearts. So when I go to Kenya and I go minister there. I, and, I, and the people that I minister to are mostly the backslidden. I'm not bringing the gospel to them for the first time. They're just they're just walking in the other way, and and they come and they get saved at the conference, which is great. But in in America, this is a place that the the word of God was preached and preached in every city, every every town knew knew the Lord. So now we're in a in a generation where it's it's not it's. It's the people aren't taking it as they used to take it. And it comes back to what you said at the beginning of the show. They need clear gospel. They need clear Christian gospel. Yes. But, you know, the young generation here in America is, uh, knows very little about the Bible. Mm. Uh, there have been statistics uh, that uh, a huge percentage um, of, of of families don't even have a Bible in their homes. Wow. And, and the children grow up like that. They don't know the most elementary things um, uh, of the Holy Word of God, of the, of, of the Bible. So um, I, I believe, I believe with all of my heart that we have a message for the young people. Uh, they are responding. They are responding in Jesus' name. I, I'm not a young man. I'm 73 years old. But I'm on Facebook, you know, and I have got um, um, over 4 million followers on Facebook. I write every day the Word of God on Facebook, and it goes right across the world. And do you know what Facebook tells me? Facebook tells me that, that over 80% uh, of my followers on Facebook are 24 years old and younger. Mm. There is a hunger for among the young people. And I believe we communicate when we preach the gospel, uh, 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 break the bread, of life into small
long pieces that they can choke, but that they can eat them. Mm. You know that is that is so true. That is so true. When I, when I go and preach at some churches, the churches that are younger really respond to my stories and my scriptures and how I present it. And it's it's the younger people. They're just taught a different way, and you got to reach them. But there is a hunger. I mean, I can look at it with at my son's schools. That they just they are they're all in high school and in middle school, and and I can see that their kids that go through stuff. That they ask him to pray for them because they don't know how to pray, and and it's it's amazing to see how it's just missed uh, the, uh, families and stuff that that need that need the Lord and stuff. Tell us tell us about your book, Raised from the Dead. What what should readers expect when they get the book? That book is is uh, unbelievable because it comes together with a DVD documentary. Somebody had a camera there, and this is so very well documented. Uh, 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 so many investigative journalists have tried to, to, to tear it to pieces. No, nobody has managed. Many of them uh, left with tears in their eyes. It is so authentic, it's real, and that is the reason I've never written about it before, never ever written. I always felt uh, I, should, I should just wait another year and another year and another year, but now it is here. Um, I'm telling the story of the connection between myself, Africa, and America, why I have faith. Uh, for America, that uh, in our gospel crusades, uh, from stadium to stadium, and from state to state, and from coast to coast, Jesus will save very large numbers of people. And, and then also the actual story, how it all happened, uh, it, it, it is, it, it's a hair raiser. It, it gives all the glory to God. I take no credit at all. It's Jesus from beginning to end. Hey Amen. I'm looking at the book right now, and I see a picture of Daniel in his coffin. And that's, that's eerie looking in itself. <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. He's all dressed out. I mean, he's, he was he was ready, prepared to get buried, correct? Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, the family was not in favor of his wife bringing him to the, to the meeting, but it was his wife that had the faith. She said, she, I've, seen, I've seen a poster in the city, uh, Reinhard Bonke is in town, he is an anointed man of God, and she said, that's what she said, if I can only bring the coffin somewhere, somehow close to him, I believe my husband will live, because Hebrews 11 says that by faith, that by faith women got there, their, their dead uh, husband's back. And so she dug in her high heels and, uh, and hired an ambulance and brought the corpse to the cathedral and insisted that uh, it, it, it had to be taken inside. And, and, and this is what God has done. Every page is 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 we grip you. It is very well written, and it will bless anyone and give us faith that uh, 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 faith for our own problems, our own needs, and, and it's on the, and available, of course, on on uh, 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 um, the internet www reinhardbonke.com and uh, 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 I can only I can only say it's dynamite. Amen. Well, that, it's an amazing testimony. I've read the book and I loved it. Whitaker sent me a copy um, over the holidays, and it, it was my book, my go-to book, just to read before I went to go preach on faith. <laughs> it, it encouraged me. It, it encouraged me. And, and, and uh, brother Reinhardt, I gotta tell you, I love the Full Flame series. Oh my gosh, 
Um, I love oh, it. I, I love it. You know, I, you, you taught me something so much. So you taught me well through the whole thing, but one thing that really captivated me on the full flame was when you said what you preach is what you get. You, If you preach on faith, you get faith. You preach on finances, you get finance. You preach on healings, you get healings. And uh, yes. that that shaped my ministry. Uh, you really shaped my ministry from that day. And uh, and uh, I I'm actually writing a book called Igniter of Faith, and uh, just about how to ignite the air for people to have miracles. And Whitaker actually picked it up as well. So uh, wow. I'm so, blessed to hear. That. I'm so blessed to hear that. So you, you're encouraging me. You and I tell you. Um, a lot of young people listen to our show as well. So I went, we got about four or five minutes left. If you just want to talk to them, they have their cell phones out right now. They have their iPads out. They have their mobile devices. And they're listening to the broadcast on these servers that we have. And they can pull them from anywhere in the world. And uh, I, just what message do you have for those young people? Well, uh, I, I, I would say that, uh, that just a second, I, I want to say that when the people who forever seek the will of God are overrun by those who do the will of God. I say that again. Those who forever, forever seek the will of God are overrun by those who do the will of God. God looks for people who do the will of God, who get going and not just keep learning. We are not learning forever. We learn for a purpose. And when we have uh, 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 passed the exam, we should do what we have learned. And Jesus will be with us for sure. You know, Jesus gave us one promise. It is totally unsolicited it is it is totally uh, uh, unilateral uh, how shall I put it he said I am with you always there is no condition he doesn't say I'm with you always if you if you are doing well he says I am with you always even if you are downhearted, even if you are despaired, I am with you. And that means that he will never leave you. You never need, you never need to ask Jesus to please come because he never leaves you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that wonderful? This changed my life. It also changed my ministry. I used to pray half of my life, Lord Jesus, please come into this meeting. Please come into this meeting. And then one day I woke up. I said, what? He is with me always. Only somebody not right in his head will plead with someone to please come who's never left. <laughs> you see, so Jesus said, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Turn yourself into the arms of Jesus and he will be with you and do what you cannot do. That is my word to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a perfect way to end the show. And I tell you, if, if you didn't feel God's anointing touching you, <laughs> you need to pray harder because <laughs> I felt you felt the anointing of God just going through you, brother. And I've read those scriptures many times. But when, when you say it, I can feel it. I can just feel the Lord talking through you. And it's a pleasure to have you on today's show. And I, and I thank you for, for making the time, my brother. Thank you very much. God bless you. Till next time. Okay. God bless. And we'll talk to you in a little bit about the, the Skype. <laughs> All right. God bless. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Right, bye. Amen. That was just an amazing, amazing, amazing broadcast. And oh my goodness, where do you, where do you go from here? <laughs> uh, this is like the the premier, of the the cream of the crop, the premier evangelist of our time, uh, Reinhard Bonnke, uh, and 
amazingly spending the time with us to, to talk. And uh, I wrote down a few notes there. If you didn't, if you didn't catch it, he said, "Those that forever ever seek the will of God are run over by those that do the will of God." Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. That's an amazing, amazing testimony. Amazing, amazing uh, minutes with him here, and to have him for just the time that we had. I pray that you were encouraged. I encourage you to get raised from the dead. From Reinhard Bonnke, the miracle that brings promise to America. You can get this anywhere books are sold. Any bookstore, you can go online to ReinhardBonke.com. You can get that from his website. You can get it anywhere on the internet, Amazon, Barnes Noble, wherever books are sold. You can pick up this book, Raised from the Dead, by Reinhard Bonke himself. Talks about how he made the decision to come here and how a special miracle happened that he'd never seen before in his life. A man being raised from the dead three days in his burial suit. The picture's in the book. Also comes with a complimentary DVD that you can see the footage and the testimony of this man's life. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to pick up the book wherever books are sold. Go to your bookstore. Tell them you want it in stock and you want to buy multiple copies that you can hand out to those that are around you. Write me, Revelation Ministries, P.O. Box 5172, Kingwood, Texas, 77325. You can, write, you can call me at 888-642-4767. Anytime you need prayer, we're going to have that prayer line running pretty soon almost 24 7 up to 12 o'clock right now and uh, you're going to be able to talk to some anointed people we'll catch you next time on the midwatch god bless you i want to thank my guest reinhard bonke for setting the tone for midwatch this year oh my who we're gonna have next god bless you we'll catch you next time on the midwatch we love you the views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of this station, this show, or its host.